Hi folks, uh, in this video we will learn about dummy variables which are a particular way of encoding information about categorical or grouping variables in the context of a regression model. Uh, so here's a simple motivating example so that we can understand what dummy variables are about and, and what they are used for. Uh, this data set right here that you see on the right hand side of your screen uh, shows two uh, dot plots here. Uh, they represent weekly sales of packaged sliced American cheese at a Dallas area Kroger's grocery store. That's a big Texas grocery chain. Uh, and the two categories here represent uh, the answer to a simple question, yes or no, was there an in-store advertising display for cheese that week? So every dot is a week and over here we have the yes there was an ad display ad weeks and over here we have the weeks where there was no display ad and it stands to reason that that kind of marketing effort would uh, increase the weekly sales volume and so it seems to be at this restaurant uh, if you look at the blue dot which is the average sales volume for the weeks where there was an in-store display uh, it's about 5600 and the group mean as evidenced by that red dot for the no display weeks uh, was about 23 2400 or so uh, and if you're careful and you count Calculate the difference between the red dot and the blue dot, you find that that difference is 3,236. So here's the idea of a dummy variable. Uh, there are two ways that we could imagine encoding the information in this plot. One is to simply quote the two group means, that is the location of the red dot, the group mean for the no display weeks, and the location of the blue dot, the group mean for the yes there is a display weeks. If we were to do that, we would report two numbers. It would be that group mean, about 23, 2400, and that group mean, about 5600. Here would be the second way that you could do it. Uh, you could report this group mean right here, the 2300 uh, for the no weeks, and then you could report the difference between the no weeks and the yes weeks. Uh, that difference is 3236. And it's pretty clear that you're reporting uh, the same information there just in a different form. It's easy to reconstruct where the blue dot is if I say hey here's the red dot and here's how much higher the offset is uh, that the blue dot is from the red dot. Uh, and that's exactly what a dummy variable does. It presents information about groups or group means in terms of a baseline category and then the offset to another category. Uh, and the reason we do that, well, there are a number of reasons, but probably the simplest one that we'll emphasize right now is the fact that oftentimes what we're interested in statistics is differences. We're interested in making comparisons between two conditions. And if we use dummy variables to encode grouping information, the parameters that we're estimating exactly correspond to the differences that we care about. To a marketer, that's the, the quantity of interest here. What's the delta? What's the difference? What's the advantage to having the marketing? intervention of the in-store display compared to not and you can directly read that off from a statistical model if you phrase it in terms of grouping variables uh, or dummy variables. Uh, we will see some other advantages as we uh, as we get more sophisticated with these but we'll stick with that one for now. Uh, for the moment let's just learn a little bit of the nuts and bolts of how these dummy variables work. So we've got two categories here for our grouping variable. There's no and there's yes. And we will arbitrarily label these with numbers. We'll say that there's some variable xi, uh, and that variable xi uh, is telling you for a given week, remember i is the, the notation for indexing our weeks here, week one, week two, week three, and so forth. So we're going to say xi is equal to zero if we are in this category. We'll call that category zero. And xi is equal to 1 if we're in this category over here. So again, we're just assigning an arbitrary numerical label to our categories here. And you might ask, why do we start counting at 0 rather than starting counting at 1? And we'll see the answer to that here in a second. So this is category 0, and this is category 1. And uh, you know, every week falls into one of those two categories. So here's how a dummy variable works. A dummy variable is this thing in this equation right here. You see this bold face 1, and then in brackets down here you see xi equal to 1. Remember xi is the category. Uh, we're in category 1 if we're in the yes, there is a display week category over here. So this equation right here expresses those two group means, the red and the blue, in this baseline offset form that we've been talking about. And we see here's the baseline, beta naught, that corresponds to the red dot right there. And here is the offset, beta 1, that corresponds to this vertical difference right here. Uh, and the way to read this 
one sup uh, subscript xi equals one, this is the dummy variable right here. Uh, and the way that, that this it works is this quantity takes the value one whenever this statement here in the brackets is true. And it takes the value zero whenever that statement is false. So when we're in the display weeks, xi is equal to one. That's uh, what the variable xi is indicating. And then this dummy variable here takes the value one. Otherwise, it takes the value zero because we're in this uh, left-hand side of the pot over here. So let's see what happens when we sort of calculate exactly what we would expect to happen about y under those two situations. So when the xi equals zero, or you know, just sort of shorthand here, x is off. We're in the no display weeks. What do you expect y to be? Well, beta one times zero is equal to zero, and so all we're left with is beta one plus error. That means that the expected value is just going to be beta zero. On the other hand, when this variable is on, in other words, when xi equals 1, this dummy variable is on, it's equal to 1, well then we get beta naught plus beta 1 times 1, and that's just beta naught plus beta 1. So here it is, baseline and baseline plus offset. If you want to connect that back to the picture up here, beta naught is going to be the location of that red dot, beta 1 is going to be that vertical distance right there and if you want to reconstruct the group mean for the blue dot right there the yes there is a display weeks what do we get we get baseline plus the difference beta naught plus beta 1 okay so there's the the sort of graphical picture and here's the equation or algebra picture down there and we can think of beta naught as the intercept or the offset uh, rather the intercept or the baseline and beta 1 as the offset Okay, and in this case, we estimate beta 1 to be 3,236 because that's the offset. Uh, this also works in scenarios when you've got a grouping variable that has more than two levels. And this is actually where it really kind of comes into its own as a, uh, a method of encoding grouping information. So this is now a, a different... It's the same data set, but kind of a different slice of it. Uh, in this picture, we're looking only at the weeks for 11 different grocery stores where those grocery stores had an in-store display ad. And this is 11 different Kroger stores in 11 different cities across the country. Uh, you know, here's Atlanta, here's Houston, here's Louisville, etc. Uh, and we can still think about the group means in baseline offset form here. Okay, so uh, in this particular picture, we've chosen Atlanta. Here's its group mean, that dot right there, and that straight line across the plot. That's the Atlanta group mean. Let's call that the baseline. Uh, and then we measure all of the other group means, like the one for Birmingham right here, the one for Dallas right here, the one for Houston up here, in terms of offsets with respect to that baseline. So let's see two examples. Uh, for Birmingham, uh, its group mean is down here a little below 2,000 units of, of chief sales per week. So what's the offset from the Atlanta baseline, which is up here at around 6,000? Well, it's minus 3864. That's the vertical height of that arrow right there, the offset. What about Houston? Well, its group mean is, is way up here over 10,000. Apparently, Houstonians really like packaged sliced cheese. And so the offset from the baseline case over here in Atlanta is 44.59. And that's the vertical distance of that arrow right there. Okay, so again, it's pretty clear for any of these 11 colored dots right here representing the means of their respective groups, we could write the, we could encode that information as whatever the difference of that group mean is from the baseline case of Atlanta. And obviously, trivially, Atlanta has no offset. It's the baseline. Okay, so let's see how this works algebraically. Uh, this is, again, it's important to understand the equations, although if you get this picture and you see what the dummy variable is representing, that offset right there for Houston, that offset right there for Birmingham, then you're going to be fine at understanding dummy variables when we go to the equations. It's just a matter of, of formalizing it. So let's take the special case uh, of where there's only three levels. So it would be like focusing on just three stores, you know, Atlanta, Birmingham, and Houston, and ignoring all of those other stores. What does that equation look like? Well, because there's the Atlanta baseline and then there's two other cities, Birmingham and Houston, we would need two offsets in order to encode that information. Okay, so we're going to have two dummy variables, one associated with Birmingham and one associated with Houston. Let's look at that as an equation. <clears throat> so again, xi, that's our variable telling us which category we fall in. We're labeling those categories arbitrarily as 0 through 2. So when xi equals 0, that's an Atlanta 
observation. When xi equals 1, let's call that a Birmingham observation. And when xi equals 2, we'll call that a Houston observation over here. So all that variable is doing is telling us which group we're in. And now these are the dummy variables associated with x. So this dummy variable right here takes the value 1 whenever we're in a Birmingham week and 0 otherwise. And this variable right here takes the value 1 whenever we're talking about a Houston observation and 0 otherwise. Okay, and so clearly when we're talking about a Birmingham observation, this term is going to drop out because it's beta 1 times 0, and we're left with beta naught plus beta 1 superscript 1 for the first level of the category times 1. And so this beta 1 right here is going to represent precisely this vertical difference right here, minus 3864 for Birmingham. Similarly, when we're in a Houston observation, this dummy variable drops out because xi isn't 1. In fact, it's 2. That's what Houston is. And so we're left with beta naught plus 0 for this term plus beta 1 superscript 2 for this term over here because beta 1 times 1 is just equal to this number right there. Okay, uh, And so it's clear that this whole thing is 0. We're left with beta naught baseline plus that number right there, beta 1, the coefficient for the first grouping variable, for the second level, superscript 2, and that is exactly going to correspond to this vertical distance right here, 44.59 for Houston. Baseline plus offset equals group mean. Now, when we get up to more than uh, three levels, we have to you know, have a little bit less cumbersome notation than writing them out explicitly. And so we can write this as a full sum of k minus one dummy variables. So if we've got k levels, in the case of the grocery store, going back to this picture, k is 11. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 grocery stores. We will write that again if we start labeling at 0, 1, 2. By the time we get up to here, we're at 10. And so that tells us that we are summing over uh, that many, uh, 10 dummy variables, and they go from k equals 1 to capital K minus 1. In that case, that would be 10. So dummy variable 1 to dummy variable 10. Uh, and in every, in, for any individual observation, only one of these dummy variables will be active. It depends on what group. If we're in k equals 1, again, we're talking about a Birmingham observation. If we're in k equals 10, we're talking about a Roanoke observation. K equals 8, that's a Louisville observation. And so only one of these dummy variables will be active for any given observation, and so only one of these coefficients or offsets will be picked out as being non-zero. And so you can see that these numbers right here are encoding all 10 of these different offsets, 1, 2, 3, and so on up to 10 compared to the baseline of Atlanta. And that's how dummy variables work in the case of a single categorical variable that has more than two levels. And so if you're keeping careful, you're doing careful accounting here, if we've got capital K category, so in this case capital K is 11, there will be K minus 1 or 10 dummy variables. So 11 groups, 10 dummy variables, because there's always the baseline, Atlanta, and that's beta naught in this equation right here. And that's what we end up with. Again, baseline plus offset for the case where xi equals 0 when you're in Atlanta, you're just the baseline. And when you're in any other group, if you're in group little k, this is your offset and this is your group mean right here. So baseline plus offset 4. And that's just giving you the equation or algebraic version of the picture that we saw before. Okay, and if we want to see what those coefficients look like in a table, here they are. Here's the intercept or the beta naught, the baseline for the Atlanta stores. And here are those 10 dummy variable coefficients, those beta 1 superscript k's from the equation that we see right here. And, you know, pretty simple arithmetic here. If you want to calculate the group mean for, say, the Detroit store, it's the baseline plus whatever the offset for that store is fit by least squares. For Nashville, it's the baseline plus the offset. And if you're careful about saying, you know, 5796 uh, minus 1838, in fact, you will get exactly that number, 3958 right there. All right, so that's how dummy variables work. Uh, an important question here is, what about the choice of baseline? So you can see, we go back to the picture, we measured everything 
with respect to Atlanta as a baseline. And that was completely arbitrary. We drew our line there and we said all of our dummy variable coefficients are going to measure the offset from the Atlanta baseline. We could have picked any store as the baseline, maybe say the Dallas store or the Nashville store as a baseline. And if we were to do that, the baseline would change and all of the offsets would change. You'd all of a sudden be measuring the difference rather than the difference from Houston to Atlanta, you'd be measuring the difference from Houston to Nashville. And so that number, the dummy variable coefficient, is going to change. What won't change is the group means themselves. Okay, so none of the numbers, the vertical locations of these dots will change. You're getting the same information. You're just uh, encoding that information as offsets with respect to a different baseline. So let's see that. Let's pretend that we were to pick, instead of Atlanta, picking Dallas as the baseline store. So we're going to get the same group means, but a different baseline and therefore different offsets because we're measuring, say, the distance from Houston to the Dallas. Let's go back to this second table right here. It's right here. And now our intercept corresponds to the group mean for Dallas. And all of these offsets correspond to the difference between that city's group mean and Dallas. And so if we take baseline plus offset for Houston, we get 10,255 again. It's just expressed in a different way, a different baseline, a different offset, but the same group mean. So is the choice of baseline in one of these dummy variable models, is it arbitrary? The answer is yes, it's totally arbitrary. We often pick it to be the first alphabetically or, or just whatever is convenient for this, uh, the standpoint of picking a baseline. If we were to change the baseline, the fitted coefficients of the model will change because the baseline will change and therefore all of the offsets or dummy variable coefficients will change as well. But what will not change, as that picture above emphasized, is the information about the group means that those dummy variables, those offsets, and that baseline are encoding. So will the model change depending on which baseline, uh, which grouping variable level that you call the baseline? Yes and no. The coefficients will change, but the group means and the information that they represent will stay exactly the same.